KA, KB, PKA, and PKB. So we have an acid association constant, or sometimes called the acid ionization constant, and also the disassociation constant. So all of them basically describing that this Ka, this equilibrium constant that measures, it measures the degree of dissociation for an acid under specific conditions. For an acid, HA, so H being the proton that's being donated, and then A, which is the rest of the acid, we have the ions that it separates to on the top divided by the concentration of the overall HA, which is the acid. So sometimes you will also see H3O positive in the place of H positive, depending on the condition. But remember, both of them tell us that something is more acidic or less acidic. So we can use pKa in relating conjugate acid base pairs. And that's why we use Ka and Kb. We also use something called pKa. pKa is the negative log of Ka. This tells us if something is a stronger or weaker acid. So the smaller the K P K A, the stronger the acid. So the, the smaller the PK is, the stronger the acid is. So basically if Ka is bigger, is much bigger, then pKa is going to be smaller and make a stronger acid. Now, let's talk about the base dissociation constant, Kb. It's an equilibrium constant that measures the degree of dissociation for a base under specific conditions. So we have BOH, which is our base, and then the ions it separates into over, multiply together the concentrations, divided by the concentration of the whole base. So we can use P Kb as well, and that's going to give us information about the base being strong or weak. So pK Kb equals negative log of Kb. Kb, and this is telling us that if it has a smaller pKb, then the stronger the base. So the stronger the base is going to be. Now, we also can relate Ka and Kb together. So if we know Ka, we can find out Kb. So at equilibrium ideal conditions, what we have 25, we're going to have Ka times Kb equals actually Kw, which we know equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4. So if we know Ka, we can find out Kb by using this relationship to find out. Now also pKa and pKb are related. pKa plus pKb must equal 14. Must equal 14. So that's also an important thing to remember. So remember that the relationship between Ka and Kb tells you whether something is acid or base. So if the stronger the acid, so the larger the Ka, the weaker its conjugate base is, so it's going to have a smaller Kb, it's going to have a smaller Kb, and that's going to mean vice versa. If there's a weaker acid, so a smaller Ka, that means its conjugate base is going to be stronger, and it's going to have a bigger Kb. Now, Ka and Kb can also help us understand when we have a weak base and a weak acid. So if we have a cation from a weak base and an anion from a weak acid, what's going to happen to the solution? So looking at this on this side here, if Kb is greater than Ka in that, in that place, it means that then the solution must be basic. So it must be basic solution. So greater than 7, it must be, have a greater than 7 pH. If Kb is 
really almost equal to Ka, then it's practically neutral for that solution. And I'm going to write this down here. If you have K, if you have KB being, if you have KB being less than Ka, that solution is going to be, that solution is going to, will be more acidic. You're going to have more acidic. So it's, it's pH is going to be, it's going to be less than seven. It's going to be less than seven. So this can help us understand conjugate acids and bases and their relative strengths to each other. So Ka, dissociation constant, we also have pKa here, which we can calculate this way. And pKa plus pKb must equal 14. pKb equals negative log of Kb. And we know that Ka times Kb is going to equal Kw. And that is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14.